So in the previous uh, session, we were uh, trying to write a code to classify the text, textual data. So the textual data is related to the uh, various types of faults that exist in a company. Okay, and uh, we had written a main function, a, a script and a function related to that. Okay, so let's quickly go through that. So in the first part, we will clear everything. So we load the data set. The data set is in the form of a CSV file. Okay, and it's read in the form of a table. Okay, and take the complete text as the string format. And we see the data, that's why head of the data. Then uh, inside the data, right, we have a category. First, let me run and then, then I'll show you, right? So we run that part. Okay. So it's reading the data now. So we can see that the data is in the form of five columns and n number of rows, number of rows equal to eight, uh, 480. So there are 480. Okay, so let me, let me bring this graph a little. All right, so what I do, we'll see what is the details of this data so that it is present inside this data variable. So you see that there are five rows, 480 columns. All right, out of which uh, our main intention is that the machine has to, we want to teach the machine how to read this data. Okay, this one by one and it should be able to predict what type of value that corresponds to. Okay. So that's our data. So basically we want to read this one, two, three, four, so first column, and it should be able to right, uh, classify that data into this, right? Category, uh, that is so what we are trying to do here, we want to make this categorical data as, right? This data, which is in the category, right, the second column, we want to convert that into a categorical data. In the sense, each value will be a category. Mechanical failure is one class. Electronic failure is a second class. Leakage is a third class. Software failure will be the fourth class, right? And so on. Like that, we want to have various uh, classes so class you can detect you can separate by using the keyword called you uh, using a function called category so that says it you convert whatever data inside that into a categorical data okay so it will convert that into a categorical data so then we call that figure okay so i'll run that part once again just to see that what are the various categories we have so in this particular figure, you can see that first category, that's the horizontal axis says class. First class is electronic failure. Class number two is leak. Class number three is mechanical failure. Class number four is the software failure. So how many, how many data set, what's the size of each class? First class is 168, class number two is 68. Class number three, you can see it is, 204 and class number four, which is a software value 14. Okay, so there are that's the data set size. All together, when you add up, you will get the size equal to 480. All right, so that is the first thing in this particular section of our code. We just try to read the data, categories, categorize the data, right, and we also try to visualize the data. That's the first part. All right, so now we try to split this data into, right? Uh, uh, so I, I want to uh, train and the, uh, I want to split the data into a training partition and the testing partition. So it can be done by using a function called CV partition. Which data you want, you tell that's the data I want to do this, right? And there is a holdout in the sense you retain 20%. Right, remaining eighty percent, you do the trans, you do the uh, partition, and you put it into the variable called x. Okay, so that's the meaning, right? So in the x, read the training part. Okay, let me run this, and uh, simultaneously I will be able to show you what exactly is happening. So I'll run this part first. So once it is 
once it is finishes running so I, I i will be able to visualize what is called as a data cloud world cloud world cloud so the word cloud means that whatever is the highest right high, uh, the maximum used word will be in the uh, biggest font size and it will be in the in either red color or the colors close to red color, right so in this case uh, right we can see right mixer scanner assembler agent sound etc right and the surrounding words will be slightly lesser used but their font size will be larger right and so on you can see that a lot of uh, words are being used several times over. okay so in addition to that let me come back to the code right so uh, here you can see that so data training is from the data right i have to read the training of x where is the training of x so let me go to the x here so inside that i will be having right the train size test size etc so from that i'm reading okay so uh, you can look at the details here. so training size uh, testing size total observations etc the complete details are available inside this. so x is equal to a it will get partitioned in according to this so training of x right whatever we see right that training from the x you pass it to the data training similarly test part of the x that is the remaining 20 percent will go to the data testing okay that is the data it will be the data's position only but i what i want i want to pass the description right so that data training if, if you see the data training and data testing which is here right so i'll just open that so you can see that right the description category the, the whole uh, data set which was 480 in size they got divided into 384 and 96. So data training contains all the five columns, but I'm not interested in that. I just want to give the first column as the input. So you see text data for training is nothing, but in your data training, read the first column. So you can see that the first column has a uh, title called description. So data training dot description should be used as text data training now you see the text data training if you go there you'll see only the first column present over there okay so data text data training contains only that first column. so how i i made that statement over here in the sense only the description part put it here similarly for the test data also whatever is present in the description put it into the text data testing okay also i need the class right so this whole data belongs to which class because every line will be different different class so we can put that into this right into white train so again i go to the data training data training will have five columns out of which i am supposed to take out a column called category where is that it's the second one all right so second column says that okay first data is a mechanical failure second data says it is mechanical third data is electronic and so on so category wise you put it into a variable called x y train y test okay then right uh, we visualize whatever the uh, okay the frequency of occurrence of the words in the text data tree right that's what we saw when we ran the code and we observed the uh, what you call as the uh, word word cloud that's the word cloud we saw so far okay all right then let's uh, move to the next uh, section of the code which we have there i want to uh, convert this text into by i i want to do a pre-processing of the text right so i we had to write a uh, function right because this has to be applied for each and every row of our data set so you see you will run the code some some something like 380 times right for uh, during the training part and the, for the testing data you will run it for approximately 1996 okay so since our intention is to uh, test train and the test uh, run the uh, pre-processing so many times it is better to write a function 
So we wrote a function by the name preprocess text. Right? Again, inside the preprocess text, we are uh, uh, using the built in command. Okay, so first is a tokenized document. So tokenized document in the sense if you give a complete sentence like things continue to tumble like this. So it will split that into right the words only. So things, then the next will be continued, then you get a two, then everything will be separated. Okay, that's called as a tokenization. You perform the tokenization of that. So tokenization can be applied for the complete document if you want to pass a file. Or if you are, are interested in sending a sentence and getting the getting as an answer or related to the sentence you sent, if you want only to extract every word in that sentence, that's also possible. So tokenized document is a built-in command. Okay, to do that, then we use a lower of D. The lower of D is going to convert the data into the lower, so lowercase. Everything will be converted into lowercase. Then it is punctuation is another function that's used to uh, remove all the punctuation marks from your text. So that is done. It will be present in D and we know that D is our, D is the variable which it returns. Okay, so you see what we do, we pre-process the training data as well as the testing data. So doc train and doc test will be that. Okay, right. Then we try to visualize the. Okay, I, I'll do this later. Uh, let me let me let me run this part of the code first. Okay, then I'll I'll, I'll visualize. Right. So uh, this is talk train of one to five. So first five, you see that, right? Everything is a small, every, everything is smaller. Okay, so that's what I can, I also check the, what happened with the doc uh, test. Right, it's also same. So actually you can see it, it calculates the number of words as well, five tokens. There are five tokens, pride, capacitors in the, SM. Like that you have seven here, six in the next one, four in the next, and the five in the last. Okay. All right. Then, uh, right. So that's what is done. Then we do the word encoding, right? Word encoding will convert uh, the do trained document into an encoder. So you can see that it is an encoder right which holds the total number of words distinct words present in the complete uh, document okay what are the total number of uh, words in the document and you will also create a dictionary like a vocabulary what are the various words present at right what are the 400 and it says that okay total length is there this much Right, it says 432 is the total number of words. What are the 432 words you can see in the vocabulary? All right, so that, that's what is this. All right. Word encoding is a function used. All right, then now what I do, I'll first calculate the length in the sense, what is the size? What's the total size? Then we'll look at a histogram saying that, right, for each of the class, how many data points do we? What is the length of each of the statement? And uh, for each of the given length, how many documents we? For example, there are for length two and all, you don't have any documents. For three, there are, uh, right, 30 documents with three, right? 45 documents whose length is four, right? Like four words. Five words document are 77. Like six, you have seven, also 17. Then eight, right? Then eight, then nine, and maybe then ten. You can see the details, right? So uh, by this time, like ten, you would have covered almost right 80, 80 to 90 percent of your uh, data set, right? So other than outside, outside this, you still have ten plus uh, ten plus to twelve plus two plus one. 
plus 15 documents are having the size more than 10. So that, that's what to observe that we plotted this and now we fix the length of our sequence to length equal to 10. Right? Anything more than 10, we try to eliminate. Okay? So, uh, this is because we try to make sure that whenever we convert our uh, data set into the numbers, the number of entries or the length of our data set, we want to make it, a, we want to keep it a constant. Okay, so that, that, that's the basic reason why we did so. Okay, so that's the first thing. Then, uh, so you see that we convert the same, we, we apply the same uh, rule over here. Uh, like I have an X string, X string training data is, it should be a number. So far, whatever we have document, whatever document, document team, document test, whatever you have, if you see here, right, they are actually the tokenized documents, that's all, right, everything is still the text, still in the text format, you see, right, everything is in still text format, it's not been converted into number, so now how do you convert into number by using a doc to sequence, of course, okay, so X train, if you see, okay, yeah, I think we didn't run this, so let's run this. So X train, see the numbers, correct? Right? So there are total 10 numbers. Can you see? So length, the, the fourth sequence also has length four, length 10. But you see initially there are zeros because, right? It's the, the size of the, uh, that particular uh, sentence is only four, 26, 27, seven, and 28. Okay? Only those words have been used to. Right, remaining six. I, I have I, I told that okay, I'm going to keep the length of the sequence equal to 10, fix it to 10. Right? So what, what happens if at all the length is less than 10, it adds a certain number of zeros. If you see maybe this eighth has uh, either the length is equal to 10 or more than 10, what it does, it retains only the first 10. Okay, first 10 words and converts those words into the numbers. Are you okay? So this has been done for all the 384 uh, sentences of our training data set. Now we call this is the X train because this is a training data. But I don't want a Y data, Y train to be done. Y train is already there, right? So all the 356, right, have been categorized. It, the meaning is this. So you see here, the meaning is if you have like 000, Sorry, this is a test text test data. I'll go to the training data. So if it comes like zero to nine, that means it is the mechanical failure. So you see each number 19, 12, 20, 21, 20, etc. That means it is what? It's it's actually the uh, third data. So the third is electronic failure. So you see you converted your the input data or the data which you want to train, you, you converted that into, right, which format? Into the numbers format. That's done using the docs to uh, sequence uh, inbuilt function. All right, so that's a inbuilt function and doc trained length sequence. So this is how it has been. This is the format, okay? So keep the length to be equal to 10. So use this encoder, which already has been created in the previous step by using the word encoding. Here. And right, what we did, uh, we converted this doc train using this encoder and put it into the exit train. Same the doc test using the encoder with the length equal to 10, we put it into the exit test. Okay, so the training and the testing data, right, we have converted into the required form. Okay, so till here we had done, right? Now let us proceed from here. So what should be the next uh, step? Next step is to create your deep neural network and we are supposed to uh, train that. All right, so in order to create a neural net, deep neural network, I am supposed to uh, know that what is my input size. Okay, so we start 
from uh, defining those variables corresponding to our uh, corresponding to the neural networks layers so the first thing i need to pass to the neural network is the input input size so that is equal to if you remember it's a it's a uh, one dimensional vector right so data has only one dimension that's why it is input size equal to one then then it, since this is a text data so text data needs a layer called as a word embedding layer so we need to specify what is the dimensions of embedding in the sense how many how many something like how many uh, neurons you want inside that layer right or how many what should be the hidden layer size so embedding uh, size embedding layer size right, right i'll make it more clear embedding layer size should be equal to let me say maybe 50 should work i guess okay let's see if it is not going to work after the training then we'll change then hidden hidden layers that's going to come in my next layer that is a lstm layer right uh, number of hidden neurons also we can write maybe 100 then i need to know how many uh, numbers are there number of number of words i want to find how do i find the number of words can you suggest look at the workspace and can you suggest how do i come to know that which variable holds that uh, the number of words present in this so I'm, i'll try to show the complete uh, workspace okay look at the workspace and tell me uh, from which variable you will come to know that the total number of words present in my dictionary so one of the one of the variable here right one of the variable here holds that right can you if you remember try to try to find out so 480 96 384 those are the number of uh, uh, sentences okay they are not number of words x is okay let me open and see right it says again same the training data size is 384 text size is testing data size is 96 totally we have 480 it's still the same it's not that i guess right previously if you remember i showed all the words present in my dictionary correct which which variable is that I, if you want i can show you the code as well just to trace out yeah which one ENC. Okay, let's go to the ENC. Right now, you see, yes, number of words is present over there, and that is equal to four thirty-two. Right? I can make a, uh, I, I can directly assign four thirty-two here. But if your data set changes, then you need to write, uh, look into that, and write once again. So we'll make it more generalized to code. Correct? So how do you do that? It's ENC. In the ENC, look at the num. How is the name written? Let's check that. Let's write the same thing. So it's num, then words W capital. Okay. So num. All right. So that will assign the number of words present in your dictionary to the number of words. Okay. So then I want to look at the number of uh, how do you decide this? sequence sequence length sequence length if you look at there are 480 total so sequence length means it is the sorry sequence length is see this one this says that okay keep the length of every sequence to 10 words only it's not the number of classes 
So if you remember the number of classes, we try to plot somewhere here, right? Okay. So if you look at this, you will understand that. Okay. I, I could understand that. Okay. What's the, what's the number of first? How many classes we have? Sorry, something. I'll go back to. I'll go back to this one. It says there is some error. Okay, I'll, I'll hide this. Okay. Now, now I'll run this part so that you will see that there are the number of classes equal to how much? How many classes you have? Four classes. First class number one is electronic failure, uh, two is a leak, three is mechanical, four is software. So how did you, how you came to know that, okay, there are four classes? That's my question. So now, now I know that the answer is four, right? But from where you can extract that from this workspace variable from somewhere you can actually extract from x x has the it, it actually contains the size of your data set okay so that may not be the case so where do you get the categories how many categories are there? You see the categorical data is present in the training and the testing, correct? So in that, you can find out how many categories you have, right? So either you take the training data, testing data, doesn't matter, okay? So go to that, right? And find out how many categories you have. The how many is written by the length, right? So numerical of uh, okay, N U M E L numerical length. Okay, this is the uh, function of look at the category. Uh, C A T E G O R I E S. Okay, look at the categories of one of them. You look at Y test or Y train, doesn't matter. Y in the testing data, how many categories you have? So many number of classes. Are you okay? So let me just run this and show you what I'm going to get. Just to make, make you clear about what I'm writing. So see, what is the answer? Answer is four, right? That means I have four, four classes. So this can actually be done. You can even write the other part that is a tree. Just run this till you get the four only, right? That's why I told run either for a test or training. Okay, so anyway, so I got all of them. So this is required, number of classes required because your final output, right? We are expecting so many outputs, right? If class one, one of them will act will be activated. I have four outputs, right? One of the output becomes one whenever you are trying to uh, uh, Whenever the input data is belonging to class one, first output is one. Whenever the second one is one, second data is one. Whenever the third data is given, third one becomes one, all others are zero. So happens with the fourth data. Okay? Right. So once every parameter is known, you can start with start the de definition or start building the layers. So layers of your uh, deep neural network, right? It's like this. So first, what is the type of input? It's a sequence of numbers, correct? Sequence of numbers. How do you, which layer takes the sequence of numbers as input? Try to recall, right? Whenever we did the uh, mini project based on uh, the, okay, the prediction of the stock market, you try to give the last 10 years of data as an input, correct? So the input was a sequence, right? Sequence of data, maybe five years, 10 years, whatever, right? So that was given to a layer called sequence input 
failed. So it takes sequence as input. It can be speech data, it can be a temperature data, it can be any any sequence of numbers, right? Exam uh, the other example we already used was the, the stock market data, right? Now also it's going to be a sequence, right? So what is how many sequence you send? You send one sequence. So the number one is stored in the input size. Okay, so. So this is my first uh, layer. So now you see, since it is wordings, right? So I have to tell the machine that it's not numbers what I'm sending. I'm sending are the numbers corresponding to words. Okay. So what we'll do? Uh, there is a layer to be defined called word. embedding embedding layer i have to tell you what is the size okay embedding layer size already defined right so that's the size i have to tell how many words i have correct so that is number of words that is my next layer. Is it okay? Fine. Then the normal LSTM comes into picture. LSTM layer. I have to tell how many hidden uh, uh, layers, how many hidden neurons I have. So that is of hidden layers. I should specify I'm not using any other hit, uh, other hidden layers I'm directly taking the output from here correct are you are you are you able to recall the LSTM structure you have to tell what type of output you have. now I will specify that by using the keyword out put more and since I'm going to take the output from this itself I have to specify that it is the last stage so it's the last Whatever is your last output that you are going to give, you get from this. So, as usual, the final layer of your uh, deep neural network will be a fully connection. Fully connected layer. Right? How many, how many outputs it should have? It should be the output size. Correct. So output size is already defined. Output size is nothing but the number of classes. Number of classes. All right. Then use a activation function. Stop max. Of max layer, then final output will be a classification. Okay, if if your if your problem is to solve the for the classification, you use a classification. Okay, so that finishes the number of layers. So let me try to run this part of the code. Just to check whether we have an error. No, we don't have any error. All right. So that is the uh, definition of the layers. Okay. So just if you want to visualize what's the best option, you can or simply uh, uh, type layers. Right. You can see that. Right. It's a layer array which has the following specifications. Right. There is a sequence input takes one dimensional data as input then you can see there is a embedding layer 50 dimension 432 various words used in my data set okay lstm layer 100 hidden units four fully connected layers 
there is a soft match followed by the classification okay so this is the uh, uh, these are the various layers that we have defined right again i'll uh, what was the next thing that you need to uh, do before you train you have to mention what are the options right so training options right so that is equal to the the function use is training right i use adam as the training algorithm then i'll tell you what should be the maybe i'll start with the mini batch size comma mini batch size maybe i'll just keep it as eight or maybe 10 because 10 is our size or i prefer maybe keep it as eight because it's a two to the power number but normally we prefer okay then we'll go to the gradient threshold of say maybe two We'll change all these parameters once it is uh, right once uh, it's done once the training is over and if it is not sufficient we'll definitely change okay so uh, i showed then i uh, the op next option is whether you want to uh, shuffle the data yes obviously correct we we, we already have seen uh, in the previous uh, cases that what happens if you shuffle and what happens if you don't shuffle right that's right every epoch this is how i want the shuffling to happen okay so every epoch i just want to do this then whether you need to validate yes validation data so we have to specify where is my validation data so validation data will be the same as the x tree and the y tree okay so that that's what is my data so i write x x train comma x oh, not y y train then i want to see plots right now uh, normally we prefer plot uh, that is a the training progress i want to visualize that and uh, next i want to uh, see the table robust comma one so these are the training options which i would like to anyway you can use any of the other options as well now let's use uh, okay let's go to the team net okay before that let me, let me check where whatever i have used so far is right so i'll run this section Okay, there is a okay mini batch size B A T C. Yeah, I think that works. Then in the next uh, thing, I'll train the network. So I'll call the trained neural network and I'll put it into the net variable. What's the what's the function to train? It is T R A I N network. Train network, you have to pass. What are the various things you want to train? So that is X X train Y 
uh, screen. I have to tell use these layers and use these options and train my machine. Okay, right. So let's run this section. So as we expect, uh, uh, we want to visualize uh, a graph that uh, shows the training part. And also we want to visualize a table, right, uh, which uh, comes in the command window, okay, during the training. So it might take some time, right? You can see that the training has begun. It's, uh, the, the, the table has just now it started. I'll also try to bring the training progress window. Okay, the training is going on. So as you can see, the validation shows an accuracy of 99.48%. Okay, so it looks good. Machine has learned uh, a lot, that means. Okay, and uh, even, uh, even you can see that the, the losses shown over here are pretty smaller values. Like you see, it's very small, out of which you can see the last column is almost the same value since, right? The beginning so that's how actually right uh, okay that's a learning rate so the loss is here so my mistake so the validation loss is actually right a small one so, all right so in the next part we'll uh, do the testing right so so far it's just training now the next part we'll go to the testing so uh, what we can do here, let's try to uh, okay. Let's let's try to create our own data set and see. Right. So one option is you can do the testing part by passing the testing data. That's that can be done. Okay. Uh, right. I either I can do that. So. That will be something like I just have to use this. Okay, so why private? Let's let's use this. And then just paste it. This will be the testing part. So why predict is we're using the this is the y x test. Okay, and uh, Y test, I, I already know what is a Y test, so I don't have to write like this. So accuracy is uh, Y predicted equal to equal to Y test. Okay, let's just check that this works. All right, directly it actually shows you a accuracy and the value is equal to 97.92.70, right, which is uh, a good uh, prediction, right? So whatever machine had learned, uh, learning accuracy was 99.4, but uh, since the test data, right, machine has no idea about the test data, it 
it's obviously it is expected that the value uh, is slightly reduced okay so that's the accuracy part now what i do i'll uh, tell you one thing let, let me add another part to this so what if i want to test with some new data right so maybe i want to give the data now right so maybe my data is equal to uh, maybe i'll type a data okay so that is the coolant is pulling under the Okay. So what do you expect? Which class is this? Out of our four classes, we had four classes in the training data, right? So first one, if you remember, I think that's a mechanical failure, right? Let's, let's, yeah, mechanical, leak, electronic, and the software, right? So four classes. So you see that this is actually, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that this is a leak case. Let's see whether right machine classifies that so i want to so you see that you have to pre-process this first whatever you did for the actual training data you should do the same thing for this new data okay so uh find so new it's a doc new doc is equal to pre-process okay i think the p should be capital of this so pre pre process so I typed errors this is this is pre process uh, text of my data so it performed the pre processing if you remember this has to be converted into the sequence correct so x new is equal to talk to sequence all right so just just look at the procedure right so first we uh, right so i have my uh, document here pre-processing is done okay depending upon whatever words are there i convert it into a dictionary now you don't have to create a dictionary again it's already present so directly go to this, perform the talk to sequence and call it as a sum variable. Now I'm calling it as X. Directly then I can give it for the testing. Okay, so talk to sequence uh, of, right, which one, which is your dictionary, it's encoded, right, ENC, comma. Uh, just now I created a document that needs to be passed. So new, new doc. And I have to make sure that I have the length equal to the same. What's the length predefined? If you remember, that's actually 10, right? But I will uh, use the same word, sequence. Don't remember the variable name. Yeah, SEQ length. Okay. So that's the sequence length. So in the sense, it gets converted into the length equal to uh, 10 by using the dictionary that is present over there. So every uh, every word will get converted into a number ultimately. All right. So now you go for a prediction. Okay. Uh, new prediction should be equal to how do you do that? It's a classify. Same function. Uh, classify. What do you pass? You pass the network and you pass your data. That is X, X new. Okay, very simple. This, this is how it's going to be done. Now, now let's check whether this works. Okay, I put the semicolon so I'm not able to see the answer. So let's just, you see the prediction is leak. It's, it's correct, right? So I'm giving a some very, very new data, right? So, uh, okay, okay, let's let's try to do something else. All right, so. Uh, 
unable to start as use let's see what happens something i made up my a sentence let's see says electronic failure right so that's good and uh, maybe uh yeah make a sentence for uh, mechanical failure by yourself whatever you say i'll type okay. because i want to test with the another class right so some mechanical uh, words should be coming right uh, just try to make your own word let's try to give it as input and see what output we get so uh, if you want i will i'll show you uh, uh, how we have uh, mechanical words you use some of the words over this okay not all the words try to put some of the words which belongs to the mechanical uh, field okay so i think it is present in the inside the data okay i'll just open the data so you can see right look at the mechanical values anyway and bring something very similar to that not not exact words like use one or two words from that and then you make your own okay. let's try it Uh, one second. Just a second. No, it's well. Is, is it fine now? No, it's it's not improving the font size. It's just bringing more data. Let me see. Is it is it working? No, I I don't think so because it's the same. Right. Uh, improving the thing may not be possible. Because if I maximize only the number of entries will come more, that's all. Not anything to the text size. One thing I'll try. No, it's just the change in the uh, this thing. Mechanical something will enter. Uh, Oh, sounds coming okay okay there is something called as some something related to a sound okay uh, let me make a sentence about that unable to start uh, and okay do something like and uh, uh, sounds coming right let's see what happens okay it still says it is mechanical uh, electronic failure sorry uh, i am going wrong okay then i think i need to make uh, this remove uh, sounds coming okay let's see because i saw the word assembler used for two class that's why i just added that right whenever that came it has it could identify okay so that unable to start was somewhere uh, near the uh, electronic part right so maybe maybe right obviously so what how much ever we train machine learns only that much. Right. Uh, I I think we never train the machine for a mechanical failure with the with those words. Okay. So uh, if at all you want to uh, train, uh, sorry, test with the some data which is not present in the testing data set, then this is our option. Okay. I can I can I can uh, enter then like this. Okay. So. That finishes this mini project, which using which we try to predict the uh, failure of uh, some systems, uh, whether it is out of the four categories, right? By using the uh, NLP, right? The text processing.